What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. I'm just doing some reading. <laughs> Basically I've had some deliveries, which I'll show you. This lot came from Mark Lord. He's from Simply Lays. He's the fella that helped me out with the, the new back gear on Chuck Norris and all that kind of stuff. Brilliant, brilliant bloke. Really, really helpful. Nice guy. And he makes an awful lot of this stuff himself. But basically, I bought the conversion gears for Chuck Norris, the lathe. So that's an Imperial machine. Uh, I'm a metric fella, as is pretty much everything these days, including Jixit. So I need to be able to single point thread cut metric gears, not Imperial ones. It don't really matter if you're making both bits, you can do whatever you want. But you know, for the sake of standardizing everything, I'm just going metric. So that's what this lot's for. Essentially, this is a compound gear, under 27 teeth, under teeth on the, the, the smaller ring. Um, and then I have got some um, different stud gears as well. I've got a 24 and a 28, I want to say. Yeah, 28. Combination of this and what's on the lathe already basically means I should be able to cut metric threads. Um, these might need a little bit of a tidy up. Still got a couple of rough edges on them. I think he does actually make these himself. Um, but you know, it's going to work, it's going to work. I've had also had a look through my manual. All this stuff is online. Um, if you go and have a look at Mark's uh, Facebook page, um, I think he's posted it all up there. I paid for this manual just because it's got all the tech specs and everything for everything that Boxford ever did, basically. It's awesome. Um, and I don't know what, I just prefer having a book. You don't need anything else to read it, do you? Or get to the information. Don't matter if you lose signal on your phone. Um, but it's all in here. Um, I will, I'll, I won't show you on camera. I'll just take a picture of this and shove it up. Um, but like I say, all this information is there. And apparently I should be able to get down to a, well, I should be able to cut anything from a six millimeter pitch to a 0.2 millimeter pitch which is pretty good. Um, the lead screw in the thread cutting gearbox also acts as the feed, obviously. So where you do an auto feed to get a nice finish and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, the smallest I'm gonna be able to go is 0.2, but that with a decent sharp tool in it, I should get some lovely finishes on this. So I'm gonna get all this installed and we'll see what's what. Right, let's have at it. Right, this is Chuck Norris. He's my AUD lathe. Built by Boxford in 1963, and I do love this thing, it has to be said. I've completely had it apart and refurbished it. Yes, it looks a little bit tatty and stuff because it's covered in oil and all sorts of stuff, but it's gonna work for a living. <laughs> so, if you open the cover on the side, here you've got all your gears and everything else. Um, so up here, we've got a stud gear. This is where the compound is gonna sit, and this is basically the screw gear down here. And basically by swapping these gears out to different numbers of teeth, you can basically change how much the saddle moves with each revolution of the chuck. Um, you know, it's got all these uh, like little plates and stuff on here to show you. This is obviously Imperial because this is an Imperial machine with an Imperial lead screw. Um, but basically by changing the settings on the gearbox, you can change you know, the revolutions of the lead screw and therefore cut your different pitch threads. So we're gonna get the um, the gears pulled out of this. Um, I'll have a look and see what I've got and therefore what I'll be able to do. I might have to order a couple of extra um, gears, I'm not sure. I might need a different stud gear, might need a different screw gear, um, just so I can get all the pitch threads. But essentially stuff like M6, M8, you know, M10, all that sort of stuff is what I want to be able to do. And this should get it done. Right. Right, let's see what we've got on there then. Right. There isn't an easy way of locking the drivetrain. So I've just got a uh, copper washer. That can sit in between some of the teeth on the gears. It ain't gonna do any harm because it's dead soft. And it just means I can crack the nuts. 
he's all right. Come on, there we go. Undo him. Well, I probably shouldn't have undone him just yet. Because <laughs> he's on a pinion. Stuff it in there. There we go. Right. You can tell I keep it well oiled. <laughs> the only thing I don't want oil on is the drive belt. That would be a bit stupid. Um, but everything else gets it and gets it on a regular basis. And why wouldn't you, eh? Why wouldn't you? Um, I haven't done him recently. Basically, every time I'm in it, I'll just top stuff up. There we go. He's all snugged up. It's all been oiled, as you can tell, because it is dripping again, which is fine, I don't mind that. Um, yeah, it does make a right mess. Anyways, so all I've done here is I've changed this stud gear uh, fitted a compound to it. Um, we've got the 56 tooth gear here, which is the uh, the screw gear. I've just got another gear in behind it to space it out. But this is about the finest pitch thread I'm ever going to be able to do um, on this particular lathe. Um, essentially, it's a 0.2 pitch. So with each revolution, uh, the thread moves over 0.2 millimeters, which is tiny. So let's see how much that actually is. Can you see that? Right. Turn him on. Right, if we engage it, you're looking for this wheel, how quickly it moves. <laughs> Oh, it's so slow. That'll do it. Right, I am missing a few gears, but... That's it, it's quite a simple thing. I am missing... Um, there, there's uh, this bracket here. is actually Y-shaped, so some of the... Some of the different pitches requires it to have an idler gear in here, but I don't have the stud. Um, it does negate a load of pitches I can do until I get one, and I am missing a couple of gears. Um, I am tempted to have a go at cutting my own gears as well, because I could do it on the mill. I would need an indexing head um, and a set of cutters, um, but there's no reason why I couldn't make my own gears as well. Oh, right. Right, so it's quite easy changing it. The biggest bit is getting your head around um, what what gears you need to do what. Um, I will get a picture of this and shove it up. That picture there. And if you look at it, I am missing stuff. Um, essentially, there's an idler gear down the bottom, which runs between the compound and the screw gear. I ain't got that, and I haven't got the stud to actually fit it either. So I'm going to need to either buy one or make one. Um, I have got a mill. I mean, if I had an indexing head, I could cut my own gears with a, with a set of cutters. We might have a go at that at some point. Because these ain't cheap, actually. They're not cheap. Um, so essentially, there's a... Um, pom, pom, pom. Oh, where is it? Is it a 17? I did see it in here. Oh, where is it? 
Yeah, 72 tooth, uh, 18 tooth gear sits on that idler and it has a stud. I haven't got either of them um, and I've had a grub about, I phoned up Tony, I think he wants about 180 odd quid for them. Really expensive. As soon as you have a few of these, you know, that's it. That's an awful lot of money. So I might look into what's needed to actually cut my own gears. I know I will need an indexing head, but I need to do some research. Um, but essentially, on the kit I've got now, I could do from a 0.4 pretty much to a 1.75 pitch. Um, I am missing a couple of gears, so some of those sizes I'm not going to be able to do. So again, each of those gears is going to cost a small fortune, so I am probably going to look at cutting my own gears. Why wouldn't you? I can harden stuff and I can turn stuff and I've got a mill. So if I had a head and a set of cutters, potentially I could cut my own gears. I need to look into that. But it's cool. I've got the basics now for um, uh, cutting metric threads. Um, well, the first one I'm going to need to do is going to be that that top shock mount. So let's have a look and see what that is. All right, so this is the first thing I'm going to be making where I need single point thread cutting. I just want to see what pitch it is and whether the kit I've now got on um, Chuck Norris would be good enough to do it or if I need to get some more gears. I know I'm going to need to get some more gears at some point. I know I am, but it would be good to know. Right, where are we? 1.5, by the looks of it. Is it 1.5? Yeah, 1.5. Right, so 1.5, I need a 48 tooth stud gear and an 80 screw gear. So that one there is an 80. That's 80. What's that? 40, 28. I haven't got one. <laughs> I need a 48 tooth stud gear. Right, best I order one then, eh? Oh, I've ordered the wrong one. <laughs> what a plum. Right, the chart I was looking at was this one. And it shows you all the pitches and what teeth you need and the positions of all the gears and everything else. I completely didn't see the bit at the top that says Boxford Model B and C lathes. I should have been looking at this one, which is for a Boxer Model A, which is what I've got. <laughs> and the really annoying thing is I've got everything I need to be at a single point cut of 1.5 mil pitch thread. Ugh. Right, okay. So according to this, 1.5, I need a 56 tooth screw gear, which I've got, and that's on there at the minute. The 127100 compound, gearbox setting, whatever, and a 24 tooth stud gear which again is on there at the minute. <laughs> so we're basically in then, aren't we? Oh, ah, oh, well, never mind, never mind. I am missing a whole load of these gears, so I can't do the full uh, range of them. I can do some of them. And these gears are just stupid money. I am properly stupid money. I'm, I'm going to look into what it's going to take to make my own, because I've got a lathe and I've got a mill. Um, and you know, this, I can cut, the only thing I haven't got is the means to broach it as well. So I might be looking at getting a brooch at some point. Um, hydraulic press is coming, so it's only the tool I'd need to broach it. Um, it would mean getting some sort of indexing head and an arbor to hold the, the cutting tools, which I would also need as well. But depending on the price of that, I mean, to get a full set of this, yeah, I mean, you're looking at hundreds and I ain't got hundreds to spend on it. So I might have a go at making my own. 
I want I want to be able to cut gears at some point and stuff anyway, because I want to do stuff like a, you know, a bead roller and maybe a sheet metal roller and stuff like that at some point. So, you know, it's going to be worth it, isn't it? But anyway, that means that I can do that bit on the new Topshock mount, which is, is what's going to be replacing this. That bit is going to be done on the mill. And I do want to get it cock on. I've got the turntable work really good at putting a radius in. I've got my drills and reamers and everything else. I've got bits that will get down in here and put, you know, so I can have the radius in there and everything else. I just want to get it dead nuts on, basically, which is where the second delivery comes in. I've got two of the linear scales, as you can see here, um, and I've also got the display for the DRO. I'm just waiting on the Y-axis one, which is 150 mil. I'm hoping it's going to turn up today, but if that's the case, I can shove that on the mill and I've got everything I need to make that thing that I've just lost. That thing. So that'll be quite good. I'm quite looking forward to having a go at single point thread cutting as well. That's what I'm going to be plaguing them about today in the tool shop. <laughs> anyway, the UK has just gone into massive shutdown again, just like we did back in March. Um, I'm still deemed, a, even though I'm just a welder, I'm a key worker because all the stuff that we make is used by the likes of Microsoft and Facebook and stuff. So we're all part of the communications channel. Um, but what I'm probably going to end up doing is coming in here in the mornings and try and knock out a whole load of videos and stuff just to keep you entertained and get some of this stuff done. Because no, I mean, the bike is getting there. It really is getting there. Um, but you know, stuff like this needs doing. So anyway, that's the grand plan. I do hope you're staying safe and looking after one another because it's crazy times out there at the minute. But that's where I'm going to leave it today. It's only a quick one just to let you know what's going on and we'll see you again soon. Later.